going to turn this website into an API so that it ends up looking like this. There we go. We got the real amount. Coin Z, that is E. Coin is DTC. There we go. We got the Bitcoin result. So we're going to turn that this website into an API. So basically what we're doing is we're using our, our web scraping tool that we made in the last video. We, we did this, which basically scrapes this site, looks for this value, and then saves that as a templated thing here. Okay, what's the other video for more information? But we're basically taking this coin scraper template and applying it into this api.py file. We're basically combining our web scraping with a bit of Flask, which is a Python web framework, and it magics together to make an API that we can connect to anywhere from the internet if we wanted to. Flask is just a micro framework for Python, lets you write Python on the internet, basically. We're using our existing coin scraper web scraping. Let's just quickly show you how this works. So you have to install Flask and auto scraper with pip. An API is a way to get data from a website programmatically. So basically a computer talking to a computer, as opposed to the user talking to a computer. So it lets you easily get data from websites. Hello there, I'm a user and I want to know what's on page, page 10, word number 5, of that book you're hosting on your website. Oh, because you're a user, I'm going to give you the book. You need the contents and the cover to make it all nice and presentation for you. There you go, lad. Hello, I have an API. I want to know what's on page 10, word 5 of that book you'll host on your website. Oh, because you're another computer, I'm just going to give you the exact information you need. See the difference? I hope you do. If the website doesn't have an API, you would use web scraping to get that data, which is what we've done here. So we've used web scraping to get that data, but then we're turning our web scraping into an API. For this purposes of this video, we're just going to build on top of the web scraping that we did for the Yahoo coin cryptocurrency stuff. Here it is, here's the code. Really simple. So we import our auto scraper and we import Flask. We set scraper to be an auto scraper. We load our coin scraper that we made in the previous video. We initialize Flask here. Um, so we say app is a Flask app. It's not too useful for what we're doing, but if you're building using templates and all that with Flask, that'll be useful. We then define our function to get coins. So this is extremely similar to what we did in the, the web scraping one. Probably even pull this function out of uh, our web scraping one. So all we're doing is looking for this URL, but we replace in between these curly braces here, we replace coin with whatever we pass in. So whatever coin the user wants gets inserted here into USD, because um, we want USD because that's all of the standard. Then we get the result, which is running this auto scraper command. So our scraper, get result exact, and then the URL and then we just return that. Then our next line, this is the Flask bit. App root, this is a Python decorator, basically adds extra things to the, the function below it, but our app root slash, that is just the base URL, so we're only hosting this on my local machine, so it's just localhost. Methods get, get is a HTTP method. Get basically like, I want some data, as opposed to post or put, which is saying, I want to give you some data. So get requests generally, they don't mess with the server side of things, so you don't need to secure them. And so when a user visits the slash, they run this, this function is around for them. The user visits the slash using a get request, which is just the default. This function is around for them. So query is, this is the last thing here. So we assign whatever arguments they put in as get arguments under coin. So that would be, so this is a get, the question mark, coin equals BTC. So this is the get and then coin here. Coin is our get request and then we're assigning coin to BTC. So it finds our get request for coin and then it pulls out whatever you put in for coin. So coin equals BTC. So it pulls out BTC and then it returns get coins here with query, which is the coin name. So the coin BTC gets put into this value here, query. And then that query gets passed into this function. So we're actually calling get coin coin there, we put BTC there. Uh, and then it returns the result. And then we just build a dictionary because that's how you generally return JSON data and in Python a, a dict function similarly to JSON. And so that, that's what we're doing. We're returning a, a dictionary of our coin, of our result. And then here is just how it's ran. This is basically Python boilerplate saying, if I'm directly called as opposed to loaded as a module, do this. So we do that here. Run our script, it loads everything, and then if I show you here, open up another one, so we can make a request. So I'm running this on port 8080, and then we want our get request, so with value of coin, BTC, that. So you see it's done the request here with the get, get coin is BTC. Obviously, this is a Python dictionary or, or JSON data, so it doesn't look too nice, but as a pretty good Unix command called jq, json something or other. And just pipe that into jq, but then we get this horrible loading stuff, which is curl, so we do curl silent, pipe it into jq and we get a nice result. I think we can do dot result like this. Yeah. So then we can dot result just to get the result. And there we go. We now have an API for that website, which might not have an API. We can do any coin here. Um, 
And obviously you can build this in, you know, you can use this how you want. As, as I said within the web scrape one, you can put it down here. You can even use this on your website. However, it's not really useful at the moment because we're hosting it on our local host, it means that only I can access it because I've got firewalls. What we would do if we wanted to put this on the internet, we, we would deploy this Flask application. Now it's unwise to use this for production deployments as it tells you because it's not fully secure, potentially has lots of bugs in it and won't be able to handle any sort of scale. So if you're going to put this on your server, make sure you deploy it properly. The, the advantage of doing this over just basic web scraping is that you, it's more easily shareable. You can build APIs for everything where your friends can use them. You can publish it on the internet for just random people to use. I wanted to make an API just for the local animal shelter that basically tells you, gives you the list of the newest animals, right? That's an example. Um, and then you use that to compile an email. Uh, and then you charge people to subscribe to that email and you make a bunch of money. There we go. Some ideas, little quick one, how easy it is to make an API for a website that doesn't have one using our previous web scraping video, plus a little bit of flask. Bye. That was my bad whale, Sharks.